could you do that? It's because of people like you that they won't let decent folk in. Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous episode, Henry dealt with a very tricky problem on behalf of Sahanosh. He managed to follow the clues provided by the vicar and identified the heretics residing at Ujits. By far the easiest solution would have been to simply hand them over to the vicar to burn at the stake. And while it would have removed the vicar's excuse for being a rigid, it simply meant that there was every reason for the Inquisition to come back in search for more. So while it might be a solution, it isn't the best solution in the long term, as Sir Hanosh himself made clear. Despite the very real dangers of the deceiving the Inquisition, Henry managed to convince the heretics to flee, while at the same time avoiding drawing any attention to his actions. And thus Henry found the optimal solution. Both the vicar and the heretics are gone, and neither is likely to come back to Ushis anytime soon. And yet, it seems that his services are in high demand throughout the county, so Devish sends words that he has need of his master huntsman's skills. It seems that something is amiss in the woods around Privy Slavitz. Henry, you've come at just the right moment. I sent a man to Privy Slavitz, my locator, Marius. What's a locator? A land allocator. I charged him with checking on the condition of the settlement to see if we can start rebuilding it. You're planning to resettle the village? Yes. Why Pribislavitz of all places? Because it's been lying fallow and falling into ruin since it was sacked by Havel Medic years ago. It's about time that changed. Well, it should be safe there now. We trounced that rabble on the battlefield. Yes, and that's why I sent my master locator there. However, he should have been back long since. If you've no objection, I could go and look for him. I'd appreciate that. He probably just got delayed. But I'd be happier if you checked it out. And thus Henry found himself at that fateful village once again. He'd not been back since the battle to clear the Kuman and Bandit camps. And to be honest, his memories of the place weren't exactly pleasant. A quick tour reveals that nothing has changed, aside from the very noticeable removal of the corpses. Just a very quick metagaming note. If you want to loot the place, this is the very last chance you get to do that. When he arrives at the former bandit camp, Henry discovers something unexpected. It seems that not all the bandits have run away, and a number of them seem to feel that they'll remain undiscovered in the ruins. Boys, who are you? You've no business here. I'm Henry, and I was expecting to find you here. What? Uh, how could you? So Divish's locator went missing around these parts. Well... It seems like he's all out of luck, don't it? Divish ought to send someone better than you to Parley. He didn't send me to Parley. He sent me to deal with it. Deal with it? There's plenty of us, and you're on your own. So I'd think twice about how you're gonna deal with that. Nah, enough beating around the bush. I'm lads! There's what four bandits all together, and there's a number of ways to deal right. with them. The most straightforward way is to simply kill them. But that does carry significant risks because they're not simple opponents. And in any fight against multiple opponents, it's very easy to get stun locked by enemy strikes. I only recommend this approach if you have very good skills, very good weapons and armor, and even then you might want to buff up with potions. The other straightforward approach is to try and intimidate them. You'll need at least a 15 or over in your threat rating. Let him go right now. Or you can stay here and feed the crows, like the rabble who were here before you. Alright, alright. No need to be hasty, eh? Well, we'll be on our way then. Quietly. That fella's in the tent over there. If you can't do either, then the other option is to stealthily kill them. Or bribe them. If you want to take the stealthy approach, then the recommended time to do so is at 10pm. At that point, all but one of the bandits will be asleep. As long as you have reasonable stealth skills and equipment, you should be able to take down the lone guard, and the rest can simply be killed in their sleep. I reckon you ought to take what you can while you can, before Sir Divish turns up with his cavalry. If you choose to bribe them, you'll need a fair amount of money because the bribe begins at 2,000 groschen. It's enough to keep you drinking for a month. <laughs> I know, I mean. 
I knew this would be a fine trade. Whatever method you might choose, Marys will still be very happy to see you. Psst. I'm being held captive. Help. And he resumes the survey of the town. Thank you. My pleasure. Sir Divish sent me to find you. And it looks like I arrived just in time. God's truth. I'm Henry of Scalis. My name is Marius Bielek, Master Locator. Sir Divish sent me here to survey the area. Well, the outlaws are out of the way, so we can go and report to him, right? Not just yet. Those bastards caught me as soon as I arrived. And so far, all I've seen is the inside of the tent they tied me up in. I still have a job to do. Come along with me, if you like. We'll report to Sir Divish afterwards. I'll escort you then. At least I can make sure you don't get caught again. What? Are there more of those bandits around? No, no, I, I just meant... Never mind. Should we get going? Once the survey itself is completed, he'll bring back Sir Dibish in order to get an executive decision. That's that then. The most essential surveying is done. Hmm. So, Master Locator, ready to start building? There's a long way to go before that. The few ruins that are left are basically beyond repair. It's all overgrown with brush. Oh dear. We'll have to get it all cleared before we can start rebuilding it. So it is possible to rebuild everything? Yes, absolutely. But building a whole village is no small enterprise. Hmm. We'll need timber, lots of it. Which isn't a problem in the middle of the woods, of course. We'll have to hire wage labor to begin with. Quite a lot of men. Hmm. Hmm. I think we should get started without delay. There's a lot of work involved, but it'll be well worth the effort. I can just imagine it. The church will dominate the whole settlement. Oh, that's good news. When will you inform Sir Divis? Why wait? I'll head to Townberg right away. But would you keep an eye on things here in the meantime? It would be rather embarrassing to run into more bandits when I return with Sir Divish. No problem. I'll be right here. It shouldn't take us long. My lord, welcome to Pribislavitz. That is to say, welcome back to Pribislavitz after all these years. Well, what's left of it? Not to worry, Marius. <sighs> I'm glad to be back in my old hamlet. Although, it seems to have aged about as gracefully as I have over the years. I beg to differ, sir. It's quite dilapidated, unlike your good self. But at least it's safe now. Thanks in part to Henry here, who also saved me from a predicament that cost me valuable time. Who knows? If it hadn't been for him, we might not even be talking now. Well, lad, in the end, you managed things in your own way, I see. Just as you said you would. I did my best, sir. They didn't look all that tough, so I put a bit of pressure on them and they took to their heels. You were outnumbered and you scared them off? Ah, they were greenhorns. I think they may have been a bit intimidated by me. Let's hope they don't try anything like that again. I'm quite sure they won't, sir. There was no reasoning with them. They thought since it was four to one, I'd be no trouble. I expect that was a fatal mistake. Just so, sir. No loss. At least they won't be troubling us again. Well, they were demanding a ransom, so I paid it on the spot rather than risk Marius's life. Hmm. We really shouldn't succumb to the demands of such vermin. On the other hand, no doubt you judge the situation wisely. And I'm glad Marius is alive and well, and can continue his work. So you're out of pocket then? Yes, sir, but that's not important. Nonsense. Here, this should cover it. Let's get down to the matter in hand, shall we? What state is Pribislavitz in? Well, to begin with, they wouldn't hear a word about letting Master Marius go. Of course, the clink of silver is the only language the likes of them understand. They're a perfidious rabble. True, sir, and greedy with it. They wanted a fat ransom and, uh, <clears throat> well, I paid it from my own purse. I appreciate you doing everything you can to ensure the safety of my subjects. I don't know how much you had to pay. Ahem. Uh Ahem. <clears throat> sir? Henry shouldn't lose out for doing the best he could under the circumstances. Here, this ought to cover the cost. Let's get down to the matter in hand, shall we? 
What state is Pribislav it in? Sir, in my official capacity as locator, I am gratified to inform you that the hamlet of Pribislavitz may be renewed. And indeed it offers prospects of considerable expansion beyond its former limits. But rebuilding a whole village must cost the king's ransom, though. It's true it won't come cheap. Before the tradesmen settle here and start producing and trading, it will be necessary to invest a certain amount of capital. I wouldn't venture to state a precise amount at this point, but I expect it will come to some thousands, even tens of thousands of Groschen. Well, that much? I hope you're good at haggling. Nevertheless, I can assure you, my lord, that if all goes well, the investment shall all come back to you with interest. I hope I shall live to enjoy it, Master Marius. But a village isn't a village without villagers. You'll need new subjects. Even preparing the ground for building will need lots of labour. Where can we find so many people, sir? I've agreed with Radzik and Hanish that we shall make an announcement in Rate to invite people to move here and help with the construction. After a brief discussion of how difficult and costly the rebuilding is going to be, Zidibish so assigns you the task. And thus Henry becomes the bailiff of Privy Slabets. A great honour, but let's not forget to mention the small responsibility of providing all the money. If I may, I would recommend quickly appointing a bailiff to take responsibility for the renewal of the village, its coffers and its citizens. What about you, Henry? Yes, sir. You've proven yourself well. You've demonstrated that you're capable of solving problems, and you command the respect of your former Scalit's neighbors. Well, I'm not so sure. And you're also capable of maintaining law and order. I must concur. So, let us expedite matters. Henry, I hereby appoint you to the office of Bailiff of the Hamlet of Pribislavitz in my domain. My lord, it's a great honor. Thank you. You will oversee the initial renewal and administration of the village that will set the ground for further development. So... You'll have to cover the cost for the building work from your own purse. Me? But Marius said it would cost a fortune. True. But from what I hear, you know how to get your hands on coin enough. So I expect you'll manage it just fine. <laughs> I'd like to know who's been spreading such gossip. But, sir, I've never done... I understand your concerns. But you'll be handsomely rewarded. I shall grant you the proceeds from the whole village for the first five years. So, we're agreed. You'll give this document to the Rite bailiff. He'll make the announcement to invite settlers, which should ensure enough people to begin work. At the same time, your official appointment as bailiff will be announced. I don't know what to say, sir. I'm sure you won't disappoint me, Henry. I have a document for you from Sir Divis. It concerns the renewal of Pribislavitz. The village you Person. drove those bandits out of? The very same. Man cannot live by bread alone. Hmm. 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 It says I should announce that anyone interested may move to Pribislavitz to live and work. And Sir Radzig and Sir Hanush also give their consent. Hmm. In that case, let's not waste any time. Come along with me. Carrots that'll make you in... Don't be with you, Henry. Hear ye, hear ye. It is hereby announced, in the name of Sir Hanush and Sir Divish, that you, the citizens of Ratai, as well as those who have found temporary refuge here, are permitted to move to the hamlet of Pribislavitz, to the north of Tomberg Castle, wherein you shall be vouchsafed a new life and new dwellings, providing that you shall contribute to the renewal of the hamlet. All those who choose to accept this offer shall be exempted from payment of taxes for a period of five years. They shall be permitted also to make use of timber from the surrounding woods and water from the streams. The hamlet of Pribislavitz lies in the domain of Sir Divish of Talmberg, and all who settle there shall be duty-bound to him. It is furthermore hereby announced that Henry of Scalitz is appointed to the administration of Pribislavitz and the office of bailiff therein, which office and privilege have been conferred upon him by Sir Divish 
for loyalty and services rendered. I would therefore recommend that our Scarlet's friends consider this offer very seriously, as nothing better is likely to come your way anytime soon. And so Henry helps the Scarlet's refugees once again. First he provided them with meat to trade for consumables, then he helped them get jobs carrying water, and other things. And now he's providing them with a place to go to if they want to begin a new life. Following the announcement, a number of refugees will begin to make their way to previous Slavits. There's nothing in the game stopping you from going back to previous Slavits immediately, but the DLC is best enjoyed by spreading it out over time, rather than doing it all at once. So Henry needs to give it a bit of time in order for the refugees to arrive at previous Slavits and finish the work of clearing the settlement. In the meantime, Henry is not exactly lucky in duties. While he may have cleared the bandit encampments around Rata and Tamburg, the ones threatening Sasa are still very much active. When he gets there, however, he hears of some very interesting tales of the tavern. There was one troublemaker around here not long ago. We dealt with him. He was selling some relics he claimed were miraculous. But it was nothing but worthless trinkets. The villagers sent the bloody swindler packing so fast you couldn't see his heels for dust. All the way to Ledechko, I believe. I reckon he won't last long there either. It seems that the rumors may have been wrong, however. The charlatan hasn't fled all the way to Ledechko, apparently. Ladies and gentlemen, good men and good wives, come closer. Poor or rich, old or young, there's something here for everyone. Magical ointments, protective amulets, love potions and talismans to give you the luck of the angels. He's still to be found at Sasa Square, still peddling his wares. Rare merchandise from all over the world. The relics of saints from Italy. Altar candles from France. And pieces of cloth all the way from the Holy Land. Wine squeezed from grapes, cultivated from a rose bush. Rare spices and tinctures, magical elixirs and amulets, miraculous ointments, and remarkable remedies. No luck at dice? Rabbit paws of all colors. He spends a little while listening to the charlatans' outrageous claims. Has your manhood been wilting of late? Then buy this powder made of a unicorn's horn. And Henry comes to the conclusion that this man is either extremely powerful. Come closer, mistress. Take a look at this rare crystal found in the caves under the German mountain Kiephauser. It's pretty, but what's it for? This crystal has great power. It protects its holder from evil forces and hexes. And it does away with bad dreams. Oh. But it's not very big. Down, Aren't not crystals supposed to shine? Good. But everyone knows burgers, that the crystals from the Keith Houser caves are dirty. Come and get I'll make you cry. And garlic I'll take it then. Wonderful, the ma'am. You won't regret it for a moment. Or an extremely good liar. There's clearly only one way to find out. Henry must infiltrate this man's operations. Oceans made from magical herbs plucked from the flanks of Mount Olympus. Ah, I know you. I know you from somewhere. Hmm. Where do I know you Carrots from? that'll make what? you and your family happy. Onions of course, that'll make you cry. my dream. Garlic that'll keep evil you were in a boat made of bone. And, and I put a crown of thorns on your head. All right. Tell me about this dream of yours. That dream? Yes, that dream has come true. I dreamt that a young man would become my apprentice. My own pupil Garlic, in onions, the trade of miracles. Oh, have it all. Then I'm in love. Oh, On the contrary, I, the lucky one. What's your name, young man? Oh. Henry. Henry. Hmm. A powerful name. So, Henry, are you ready to become my apprentice? Cucumber, First, tell fruit. me, who are you and what do you do? Me? I am an unworthy, low, and Salami, miserable servant of providence. Scholar or merchant, water, believer or heathen. I wander the world without home or family, Pavilion with only my wagon offering miracles to those that someone else does. That's who I am. 
Without home or kin, I wander this world with my wagon, providing the miracles that people need. Ointments, relics, aromatic herbs, rare spices, talismans and amulets for luck. Garlic soup for the winter, onion soup. What exactly does it entail, becoming your apprentice? A lot of work and strenuous labor. Knowledge of medicine, theology, and white magic. You have to study the great works of the ancients and devote your time to understanding your fellow men, listening to them, and learn to read their souls. That's a pretty challenging task. But that's why God has sent you. So what do you say? <laughs> All right, I'll be your apprentice. Wonderful! Oh, glorious day! I have a successor in my work. So, how do you plan to start training me? With a test of your practical skills. Oh. I have my eye on three rare objects of great value. But sadly, they're a little difficult to obtain. Just so we're clear, I'm not stealing anything for you. Who said anything about stealing? You said these are valuable things you're after. I don't suppose you can just pick them up anywhere. Valuable for me, because I know their power and strength. For an ordinary mortal, they barely mean anything. Oh. Well, that's fine, then. First, I need a tooth of St. Procopius. Fresh vegetables. Then I'll need a branch from a topping out hung on a church. And finally, a talisman. For luck, I'm a passionate player. Bloody hell, that's a lot. All right, one thing at a time. About that tooth, it's going to be slightly Have more complicated, isn't it? I know. Yes, Find it would be very difficult to gain such a rare relic, of course. That's why I have an alternative solution. I'm listening. A layman named Procopius lives by the monastery. And it just so happens, thanks to my intricate medical knowledge, that I found out he has a sick tooth. How did you find out he has a sore tooth? Uh, as it happens, he told me at the tavern. But that's not important. And how am I supposed to get the tooth? I haven't the faintest idea. You'll have to think of something. But maybe you'll be able to persuade him to let the blacksmith pull it. Wouldn't that be swindling people? It is, and it isn't. If I sell that tooth as the tooth of St. Procopius, then it certainly is deceitful. But if I sell it as a tooth from Vegetables, Procopius of Sasso, then I'm cucumber, cheating onion. nobody. Does it really matter whose tooth I bring, then? Of course it does. The name Procopius in this holy land is shrouded with mystical power. Sometimes I might play Garlic, a trivial trick carrot, on someone, but I assure onion, you, I'm no swindler. This topping out, what's that? You're not a carpenter, it seems. No, I'm a blacksmith. I see. Well, a topping out is a decorated spruce or a conifer tree hung on top of the roof of a new house to bring good fortune and God's blessing. Well, then all we need to do is break off a branch somewhere, buy a few ribbons, and we've got our own homemade topping out right there. You don't understand, young man. The topping out was sanctified by a priest, and it hangs on the highest church far and wide. You can't just Vegetables, replace it with a decorated fruit, branch. Apples. That topping off is hung pretty high, isn't it? Naturally. It hangs on the rooftop according to tradition. And the church is tall. And how am I supposed to get it down? Damned if I know. Carrots but they had to get it up there today. somehow, didn't they? This player's talisman. Where am I supposed to find it? I actually have a specific one in mind. Here at the inn, there's a Burgers, dice player who always has a half, cat's paw with him. That's, that's supposed to bring him luck. A cat's paw? Frying, I thought players bring along a rabbit's paw for luck. Uh, I thought so too. But this man is winning one game after another, so cats are clearly even more powerful than rabbits. Vegetables. How am I supposed to get the talisman from him? I haven't a clue. It won't be easy, but I'm sure you'll find a way. The first task is to procure the tooth of one Procopius, who's definitely not holy, but he is of Sasau. 
The most straightforward way is to simply arrange for him to be unconscious. You can either start a fist fight with him, or you can simply knock him out while he's working on the fields. It's clear as day to me. With your tooth in that state, you're just a bloated, ugly pig. It doesn't matter though, because it won't change that stupid look on your face. What? You little bastard! How dare you! And you smell like a pile of horse manure, but it's the way your breath stinks that really makes me want to throw up. Enough! But the peaceful way is to try and convince him that he needs terrible. his tooth looked at. Someone attack you? It doesn't look good. What? What are you talking about? Your tooth. I bet it hurts a lot, doesn't it? Do you, you can convince him with that? a speech check. I overheard you in the tavern yesterday. If I were you, I'd let the blacksmith pull it. Why? I knew a man once who was in the same situation as you. His tooth was sore, and he was frightened to have it pulled. And what happened to him? In the end, half his jaw almost fell out. So I wouldn't underestimate it. But... but I can't go to the blacksmith. Don't tell me you're afraid. I am afraid. I don't mind admitting it. You know what? I'll go with you. Or you can flex the medical sure muscles you acquired by helping the Scarlet refugees at the monastery. As a practitioner of the healing arts, I recognize the signs of a sick tooth. You have a bloated face, you're sweating, and the way you breathe is absolutely typical of the condition. You're a physician? Isn't that what I said? And if I can give you some advice, you should have it removed. There's a blacksmith down in the town. No, no, no. There's no way I'm putting myself in the hands of that butcher. I understand. But look here. I know about healing. I can go along with you and make sure everything goes as it should. You do that? Of course. Jesus Christ. I'm a grown man and I need an escort. You don't have to be embarrassed. Every man in the world's afraid of having his teeth pulled. I know, but even so... Let's go then, and get this over with. Certainly or not, this Procopius is quite the coward. So you have to continuously prompt him to make sure that he gets to the blacksmith. Jesus, it's gonna be really painful, isn't it? Don't worry. It will hurt a little, but then you'll feel relieved. You'll see. If you say so. I don't know. Isn't it a waste of time? Maybe it'll go away on its own. Are you mad? It won't go away, it'll just get worse. The sooner we get it out, the better. Yes, yes, you're right. Look, I, I can't. It's embarrassing. I I'm a coward and I won't be able to handle it. We're almost there. Just be a man about it. You're right. Let's go. All right, let's do it. Hold him tight. Let's do it. Ah, look! Jesus it's Christ, out! The agony. Hey, want to keep it as what a memento? I, I love it. This? Oh, all right. The second task is to acquire the topping. The only way to get it is to climb to the top of the scaffolding next to the monastery and shoot at it with a bow. If you hit it just right, one of the branches will fall off onto the ground below. Unfortunately and despite appearances, the beam that is sticking out from the scaffolding towards the topping is not somewhere you can step onto. Nor can you jump on top of the roof to get to the topping from above. The last item, the cat's paw, is a little bit more tricky however. The gambler works in the fields in the morning, but there's usually a couple of people working together with him. He begins a little bit earlier than the others, so it is possible to get him alone. So you can do a same Procopius on him and take all his stuff. Don't forget about the three odd dice that he has too. If you want to be even more of a ghost, you can simply pickpocket those things out of him. If you want to poke your nose around the farm, there's a very disturbing scene to be found in one of the outlying sheds. There's nothing you can do about it within the game itself, but clearly none of the people in this farm are particularly innocent. Of course, you can always speak to the gambler and try to get it off him that way. Aside from the standard options of threatening physical violence, You must be that lucky fellow everyone's talking about. Lady Luck has been good to me lately, true enough. But that can change quicker than you know. P 
People say that you get help from a lucky charm. Is that not allowed? No, it is. It just interests me, that's all. Why? I could use a paw like that myself. Then go to the knacker. I'm sure he'll get you one. Hand over that cat paw. Or what? Or I'm going to start breaking some limbs, and they won't belong to a cat. Jesus, are you insane? Take it for God's sake. Just don't hurt me. Good lad. Or trying to bribe him. I'll buy it from you. You want to buy my cat paw? You're joking. No, I'm not. I'll buy it. How much do you want for it? See? In the end, it brought me more luck than I thought. You can also offer to gamble with him for the cat's paw. I'd like to try that luck of yours. Let's play for your talisman. Ah, a challenge. Good. But not now. Come and see me when I'm at the tavern. All right. When can I find you there? All the time, my old woman would say. She's not far along either. If it's open, I'll be there. Our innkeeper opens before luncheon and closes when he tires of the company. Early on in the afternoon, he can usually be found leaning against one of the pillars. It is a little bit riskier than at the field, but this does present another opportunity to pickpocket him. Be aware though, because there's a lot of eyes around here, including the guards that patrol the streets around the tavern. If you have trouble getting him alone, then a good time to get him is at 11.30 when he makes his way to the tavern. Unusually, he also sleeps in a very well-guarded area. It's almost impossible to get to him without disturbing the people around him. But if you happen to win the cat's ball with gambling, there's a special line that the charlatan gives you. As you wish. My talisman against your groceries. Well, seems my luck's run out. Damn it. Seeing how I lost. I reckon that cat's paw don't bring luck anymore. <laughs> Not to you, anyway. One cat paw for luck? Wonderful! How did you obtain it? <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. I won it from him. Oh no, you don't! Now the talisman won't bring its owner luck anymore. Oh, I didn't this think of that. Cured and oh, fresh well, from the woods or luckily from the it's a cat's paw, it all so it has other delicious. uses. After completing his trials and tribulations, Henry goes back to the child and hands in the goods. So show me what you've got. The tooth of Layman Procopius, which definitely isn't holy. It isn't. But then again, one day it could be. You never know what course a man's life might take. I suppose not. But it wasn't easy to get. So if anyone's the miracle worker here, it's me. One cat paw for luck. Marvellous! Let's just hope it brings us luck as well. A branch from a blessed topping out. Excellent! And how did you get it down? I had to Good shoot it down. Watch out for this man. People. He's a and regular William to Tell. A joy yeah. to taste. Well, there wasn't any other way. So, we've got all that sorted out. And now, to the next... But if you expected that to be the end of it, he was clearly a fool. Not so fast, young man. There's one more thing. It's rather complicated and um, delicate. What thing? A shroud. A shroud? Yes. A burial shroud of someone who passed away not so long ago. So I'm just supposed to take a dead person's clothes. Christ, no. I need a burial shroud. The precious enveloping garment in which the deceased is buried. And does it matter who I take it from? It needs to be someone who lived an honest life. And I have just the fellow, a good man by the name of Lokota, who recently passed on. Right. So where can I find him? His family is waiting for the funeral. For now, he's lying in the small church in Sasa. And who was this Lokota? I know only a little. If but according to the locals, he was an honourable man. You should if certainly try to ask burden, around. That dead butcher was indeed an honest man, as you can confirm by speaking to any of the townspeople nearby. He was a respectable fellow. And how did he make a living? He was a butcher of some renown in the region. Was he a local? Oh, no. He came here from Vlashim because of an argument with his brother. 
We weren't too keen on him at first. His trade took customers away from our old butcher, you see. But we soon realised he was a decent man and we all grew to love him. It's a sad loss. What about his family? His wife, Lucy, passed away a long time ago, poor soul. He was never the same since then. He never laughed from the heart anymore. But he's left two sons behind, Peter and Mark. What are his sons like? Oh, they're sturdy men. Sturdy and straightforward. Mind you, Peter doesn't have any sense of humour that you'd notice. He takes everything as seriously as a sermon. Mark's a more open sort and a little superstitious. But don't make fun of him. If you go to the church during the day, you'll meet the very serious son. The only way to get past him peacefully is to have paid attention to the conversation you had about the butcher. So if you happen to remember that the butcher originally came from Blashim and his wife was Lucy, then you'll be able to convince the son that you are indeed a long lost relative, here to pay some final respects. My condolences. Thank you. I've come to pay my last respects to a dear relative. Have you? I've never seen you before. I believe I'm your cousin. Unlike yours, my father never left Vlashim. He must have told you where our family comes from. He never talked about him much. They didn't see eye to eye. Well, you're right. Bad blood. For a long time, I didn't know my father had a brother. So then you know my father also married a woman from Vlashim. Well, I didn't know Teresa very well, but... Um... I knew it! You lying wretch! Don't let me see you here again! Of course. I've heard only good things about Lucy to this day. Good God, it's true. You are my cousin. I certainly am. Then go ahead. Pay your respects to my father. I'm sure he'd be pleased. You're welcome to come to the funeral. And come and see us at home too. Well, that's very kind, but I'll have to return to Vlashim soon. That's why I came straight here. If pretending to be a relative seems to be a little bit dishonest, then you can take the honest approach of simply knocking him out. The interior of the church becomes well, proper property for this quest, like but you can quickly step outside. When he turns around to go back to his original position, then you can take the chance to give him a very sympathetic hug from behind. The conversation with the townswoman also revealed the that the butcher had a second son, a much more superstitious one than the first. He'll be there in the evening after 9pm. If he passes a speech check, then Henry will weave a very plausible tale about needing to make amends. Of course, that involves donating a very personal possession of the butchers. And of course, Henry donates his very valuable time to making sure that he goes to a worthy person. I see you're taking care of your father like a true Christian. I'm trying. My father, God rest his soul, deserves nothing less. How have you made sure his soul can depart peacefully? He's lying in the church where someone from the family watches over him day and night. And the windows are wide open, so there's nothing to stop his soul from leaving. Did you leave him any of his personal belongings? They always said he wouldn't let anyone take his cup, even after his death. Besides that, he also has his shroud and some spirits. And have you made atonement for his sins? What? Why? Do you think that's necessary? I'm sure he was a good Christian but no man's entirely free of sin. If you want to be sure his soul can depart in peace, you'd be wise to take care of that. Holy Mary, Mother of God, if my father's soul is at risk because of me, I'll never forgive myself. What should I do? No, don't worry. It usually only requires a trifle. All you have to do is donate some of his belongings to those in need of charity. Right, right. But what? Money? Or food? Something more personal. Maybe his funeral shroud. Of course, of course, that's a good idea. I'll take it to someone needy right away. No, wait a moment. You have to watch over your father. I'll take it to them. You do that for me? Thank you. Go to the infirmary at the monastery. There's a lot of people in need there. A more indirect way to get behind the brothers and offer your sympathies is to drop down from the balcony above. There's a side entrance to the church that you can use to get to the upper balcony. And if you drop down from there, you're outside the brother's line of sight. Ah! 
Once Henry is finished paying his respects, he'll be told by the Charlton that they need to speak in private. I have the... All the Lord Almighty, be quiet! Not here! You don't want everyone to see it, do you? Wait for me at my place. But of course, there's only so much chicanery you can pull off on people before they turn on you. That's exactly what happens to the charlatan. But it also happens to be exactly when Henry's speaking to him. I have the shroud for you. Help you now. Good work. Yes, well, it wasn't easy. I'm sure. That's also why... That's where he lives. Let's teach him a lesson. He did oh, fuck. Die. I saw him go Fuck! In. Henry! Delay them! What? How? There's a reward for you in the trunk. I'll see you in the next go. Break it down! If Henry waits too long, he'll be tagged as an accomplice and become a wanted man in Sasau. But otherwise, Henry can curse the fact that he's too fat to jump through the windows and go and confront the mob. You can be aggressive if you want. But the most likely option to succeed is to cast yourself as a fellow victim. Well, he swindled me too. I came here to throw his potions in his face, but it looks like he hasn't been home for a while. He probably ran away before his trickery could catch up with him. Bastard. Either way, he'd better not show his face in this town again. Let's go. While passing through to report his success against the bandit encampments, Henry strikes up a conversation with Urban. The guard at the custodian's front door. It seems that Urban's always wanted to get close to the holy relics. But being a mere guard, nobody was going to let him do that. Place filled with knowledge. Don't even talk to me about it. They won't let you touch the books. They don't want to talk to you. And when I wanted to look at the remains of St. Procopius, at least, they ran me off. Me! Like some kind of thief! What good is the whole blasted monastery if I can't even do that? Well, they say there's not much left of poor Procopius. What's that got to do with anything? I'm not blaming you. It's just that only monks have access to the reliquary in the crypt. Folk were even taking relics away from St. Procopius' cave for protection before. Now no one's allowed in there. I know. But I'd never dream of doing that. I just wanted to touch them for luck. Maybe I could help you. How? You're not planning some mischief, are you? No, not at all. I was going to bring you something from the cave under the monastery where he spent his time. You can get in there, you could touch it for luck, and then I'd return it. Oh, now. Hmm. You'd do that for me? Of course. Then I'd be very grateful to you. St. Procopius's cave is below the annex where Henry investigated the fallen stone. If you follow the stairs all the way down, you'll come into a small cave with a cross and a bowl. It used to be the case that sometimes the bowl bugged out and couldn't be returned. That no longer seems to be the case with the latest patches, but just for safety, make sure you save here. Just as I thought, there aren't any remains here. Hmm. Looks ordinary. A bit too ordinary. With the bowl in hand, you can simply go back to Urban and he will accept it. In previous versions, it used to be the case that you needed a speech check to convince him that this was indeed the real bowl. And that's something that Henry comments on as he makes his way back. I've got a bowl for you from the cave of St. Procopius. A bowl? I was expecting something a little different. Behold. Ah. Is it really from St. Procopius? Yes. From his cave. A truly astonishing place. This surely has miraculous powers. You're right. My God, you're right. Such holiness. I'm in your debt, Henry. How can I repay you? Thanks, but I don't want anything. I was glad to help. Truly? Well, thank you. My pleasure. And Henry? Yes? I just wanted to touch it for luck. If you took something you shouldn't have, I expect you'll put it back. Henry can also try to procure something which is obviously more holy. There's two options. One is to procure some bone pieces which may just be from Holy Procopius. Or go to someone with expertise on holy relics. I'm looking for a piece of the remains of St. Procopius. Are you now? And who would that be for? For a friend. He'd like to have something holy to treasure. 
quite a reasonable fellow. I have a piece of his finger bone. And it's from St. Procopius? Well, he was definitely a good fellow. Well, at least not a bad one. And I believe his name even was Procopius. I have a bone for you from the remains of St. Procopius. Ironically, it used to be the case that if Henry brought back more obviously holy relics, then no one would accept them without question, because they will fit the notion of what a holy relic looks like. But now Henry has to pass a speech check. I'd never try to deceive you that way. There is also a hidden third holy relic that you can bring. If you still have the tooth of one Procopius of Sassau, the one that Charlatan suggested may become holy in the future, then you can let Urban touch it for good luck. I have the tooth of the saint for you. Truly? Then show it to me. Unfortunately, you can only do that after you pick up Holy Procopius's bowl from his cave. There's nothing particularly outstanding about this option, but it is a very nice touch and I'm glad that the developers have thought about it. Speaking of the bowl, Urban does remind you that you should put back anything that you may have taken. That was no idle warning. Dave! What the... You thought I wouldn't find out? You didn't return the relic! But I... Oh, bugger. How could you do that? It's because of people like you that they won't let decent folk in. And while the quest does end after Urban touches a holy relic, if you happen to forget to put the bowl back, then after a number of days, Urban will become quite upset. It used to be the case that he'd draw a weapon and you'd have to kill him, but luckily nowadays you can simply knock him out. You're gonna cry now? Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.